It was 30 years ago that the Texas Parks and Wildlife television series, originally known as Made in Texas, got its start. To celebrate this milestone, we're taking a look back at some of the interesting stories and unique characters that we've discovered over the past three decades. In 1987, we traveled to the western part of the state to experience the beauty and mystery of the rock art of Texas. This desolate expanse of West Texas desert was once home to hundreds, perhaps thousands, of roaming tribes of people. We have evolved into a far more complex society, leaving behind our desert past. But in so doing, we've lost valuable moments from our history, waiting to be uncovered deep in hidden mountain ranges among the canyon walls are the captured moments of a time gone by. At the place where the lower Pecos River meets the Rio Grande can be found one of the richest legacies of rock art in the United States. Within these secluded rock shelters, once home to prehistoric people, are strange and mysterious art forms. They are the only lasting remnants of a people unknown to us today. These pictographs, drawings or paintings on rock surfaces, have become one of the most puzzling mysteries to be solved by modern man. The thing about rock art is that it tells you something about a long gone people that you don't get in any other way. An anthropologist by training, Dr. W. W. Newcomb Jr. was one of the first people to author a book that takes an in-depth look at the rock art of Texas. It still does things for us in terms of, of uh, emotional impact on people. Uh, I know a, an anthropologist uh, who, when he first saw some of the giant, I call them shaman figures in the lower Pecos, cried. What is it about this art form that intrigues every person who encounters it? Perhaps it is the massive size of some of the panels, which can range well over 15 feet in height and span more than 100 yards across. And there are the mystical figures, thought to be shamans, spirit forms of a past culture, which create a strange and mesmerizing effect. They give the feeling that you have entered upon a sacred tomb and glimpsed a forbidden place you become aware of their simplicity, their subtle yet formidable beauty, which draws you towards a more complex, perhaps sacred message, if only you could summon the vision to decipher its meaning. The most difficult style for me is the Pecos River style. Uh, it's uh, rather enigmatic and people tend to uh, see in a great deal of psychological expressions and it really gives you very little concrete about what the people were doing. It's mythical. And that's the one that I believe we're gonna have a lot of trouble with because I don't know if modern man can understand the myths of the people that were painting that, those pictographs. It's impossible to accurately date this rock art, but from dating archeological remains found in the area, scientists believe these pictographs were probably made five, perhaps 9,000 years ago, by a hunting, gathering people. This rock art is considered to be among the finest in the world. Many of the rock art sites are located in far out of the way places. But for those with the inclination and determination to venture into this seemingly uninteresting and inhospitable desert, there waits a spectacular treasure. 
Seminole Canyon State Park, located 45 miles northwest of Del Rio, houses two of the most famous rock art sites, Fate Bell and Panther Cave. Because vandalism is a major problem, Fate Bell is open to the public by tours only. Panther Cave is accessible only by boat and is protected by a 12-foot high chain link fence. For the most part, the pictographs remain intact and remarkably represent some of the finest preserved in the area. Located just 22 miles northeast of El Paso, nestled within the bolson of a desert mountain range is Waco Tank State Park. It's an oasis hidden behind a forbidding rocky enclosure that was formed 34 million years ago by an upthrust of molten rock. Centuries of weathering form deep depressions in the rocks. These depressions are called Wacos, which is Spanish for hollow. The Wacos collected sparse but valuable rainwater. Soon this place became a sanctuary, a place of refuge for many desert nomads who made their way to the tanks and left behind them traces of their visits. By far the most impressive relics are the crude yet complex images painted or pecked on rocks. And we may say it's crude, but the only reason it's crude is because of the materials that they had. Uh, a lot of the rock art is not crude. Some of it is extremely finely done. Some of it actually looks like it's been stenciled. How did they make this rock art? What did they use for paints and brushes? Just look around you. Take the leaf from the shucka plant and scrape away the waxy coating to expose fibers underneath and you have a paintbrush. Take the pigment from this rock and grind it down into a fine powder. Then mix it with the juice from the root of a plant and you're ready to paint. If we want the paint to stay on so that uh, if it gets wet that it doesn't come off, we need a binder. So what we need is pigment, binder, and vehicle. Now, a binder is some sort of glue that will adhere the paint onto the surface that you're going to paint. Basically, the oils, the sap, the egg white, these are all binders. They act as glue to adhere the, the paint onto the rock. It's really amazing to think you can paint a rock wall and have it exist for thousands of years, but that is indeed the case. All these are natural pigments that if you left them laying on the ground, they would uh, retain their color for an eternity. And if you put them on the rock, it's going to stain the rock rust color, and it'll last for an eternity. The rock art has been here for hundreds and thousands of years, yet tomorrow it may be gone. The major threat to these pictographs is not natural causes, but man, who in his ignorance has destroyed many rock art sites. Our greatest challenge is educating people about the treasures that lie here. Will this rock art be here for our children to experience, to learn the lesson that it teaches, to learn to look not with the eyes alone, but with the heart?